Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's National Geographic Explorer Classroom. My name is Joe Grabowski. I will be your host for today. For those joining us uh, for the first time or maybe for the last couple of weeks, we are celebrating Big Cats. And the Big Cat Week is an extension of the Big Cats Initiative, which supports scientists and conservationists working to save big cats in the wild. So we're very excited today uh, to be wrapping up the week with Carlton Ward Jr. He's a conservation photographer focused on wild Florida. He founded the Florida Wildlife Corridor Project in 2010 and since then has trekked more than 2,000 miles during two National Geographic expeditions um, to advocate for the corridor's protection. He's an eighth generation Floridian and he's now working as an ambassador for the recovery of the Florida Panther. And this plan calls for conservation of hundreds of thousands uh, of acres of ranch lands and forests across Florida. In 2015, he was given the Conservation Leadership Award from Fish and Wildlife Foundation of Florida. So Carlton, it's so great to have you joining us today. And I see that you're right out in the thick of things. Hey, Joe. Hello, students and teachers. Good to be with you. I'm Carlton Moore Jr. and I'm standing here in Florida Panther National Wildlife Refuge. This is part of the Everglades in South Florida. I'm up to my knees in water and this is a site where I have a camera trap which we'll get a little bit more into later. A technique I use to try to photograph rare and elusive wildlife. We'll show you a video in a little bit but uh, just a little bit of background on myself. I grew up in Florida, um, in, the, in suburban Florida, in the town of Clearwater, but always had a connection to nature and, and wild spaces. And I went to school, I studied biology, and I got interested in conservation. And during that time, I also developed a passion for photography. And so since then, I've been combining my interest in biology and science with my passion for photography and art to try to do photography and communications to raise awareness for science issues and for conservation. All right, awesome. Well, Carlton, I'm gonna pull up a map right now and this is gonna give the students an idea uh, of where you're located right now. So let me just switch over to a screen share and we'll let the students see exactly where you are on a map of Florida here. So this should be on your screen now, nice and big boys and girls. You can see we've got Florida down here, the panhandle and then there's Carlton at this red uh, little pointer here in Florida Panther National Wildlife Refuge. So right on the edge of uh, Everglades National Park. Can you see that on your end, Carlton? It's probably small. I can. Yep, that's where I am. Down here. All right, Everglades. perfect. Awesome. Well, why don't, while I'm sharing the screen, why don't I share the video and let the classroom see uh, a little bit. So Carlton, that's such a great video. You were doing some pretty... Uh, amazing work there in Florida. Thank you. So conservation photographer is uh, kind of kind of your role, your career. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means to you? It, it's, it's what the name says. It's a it's a photographer who works for conservation. And what that what that means is that I'm a photographer, I'm a photojournalist. I, I use my camera to tell stories with pictures. And in doing that, I work and focus on stories that deal with the conservation of nature and culture. That might be looking at the protection of the Everglades here at home, or at an endangered population of elephants somewhere in Africa. But Not it's here. about using photography to raise awareness for conservation. All right, and I think that's important to know too. You do a lot of your work in Florida. If you check out Carlton's website, you can see that uh, you've been places like Africa doing some photography as well. I began my work uh, as, a, as a graduate student working in Central Africa in the rainforests of Gabon, where I got my first experience combining science and photography to do outreach. I photographed every kind of tropical animal you can think of, the frogs, the insects, the birds, elephants, hippos. And we were able to use that work to help educate people about conservation. What I realized at that point in my career, I was going halfway across the world to tell stories that people hadn't seen. Meanwhile, there were 
so many important stories in my home state, in my own backyard, that were hiding in plain sight. We have 20 million people living in the state of Florida. I'm sure most of you know about Disney World, and you probably know that Florida has a lot of beaches. But not as many people know that Florida has cowboys, or that these cowboys are important for the protection of wild animals like Florida black bear and the Florida panther. So I decided to apply my voice in my career towards trying to raise awareness for those issues. All right, excellent. Well, from the video, I could see that uh, you were setting up a camera trap, and I know that's where you are today, you're at one of your camera traps. What is it that you're able to do with those camera traps? Well, here, I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to go mobile here and show you around the swamp and show some of you guys uh, some of the parts and components to my camera trap. Um, does Google let you switch the picture around to face the other way? Let's see. It What's should. That do? Okay. Are you looking where I'm looking now? Yes. So I am walking down a trail. This is a place in the Everglades where the scientists helped me learn that Florida panthers might be traveling. And Florida panther is a very endangered cat. There are only 200 of them in existence. There were as few as 30 back in the 1980s and 90s, but they've come back, but still are a long way to go before they're no longer endangered. And the key to that is protecting land. But in order to get people interested in that story, I'm trying to get some very dynamic photographs to show. So I'm going to step over this log, um, pick up a camera here that's sitting on the log. And this is my camera trap. You can see that we have a, uh, looks like a waterproof box, which it is, sitting in the woods. <laughs> And in, in the back of it, we have a Nikon camera that you can see here. This camera stays out on this trail, and then it's connected up to flash. You can see the light coming from the tree. There's one here. There's another one over here. And so when an animal comes through, it breaks that infrared tripwire. So if you see this little blue box, there's another one here. It's like an infrared, it's an infrared beam. When an animal goes through, it fires the camera. So if you guys watch and listen, you might be able to hear the camera go off when I go through. You see the flash is firing? I don't know if you could all see that. I think it might be a little bit too bright. Uh, okay. okay, no worries. Well, that gives you the basic idea. We'll go to the back of my camera. One of the classrooms is not on mute. It's, it, it's hard for me to hear. Um, okay, so if we look at the back of my camera. That's a picture of my legs because I just walked through and, and triggered the camera system. So what I, my hope is that when I leave this here for the next week or the next month, that a Florida panther will come through this same spot. And in fact, Joe can maybe show you some pictures of some wildlife that I've gotten with my camera traps here and in some other places. All right, I can definitely do that. So what I'm going to do, boys and girls, is I'm going to share my screen one more time. And Carlton, I'm going to go through the, the pictures once um, through, and then I'm going to go through them a second time. And then if you want to talk about them the second time, just so the classroom see them nice and big on their screen the first time. Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to go through the pictures once, and then I'm going to go restart and Carlton's gonna talk a little bit about the picture. So here we go. I'm gonna start the screen share. And should be sharing now. And let's start off with this one. So I'm just gonna go full screen here.
And then I'm just gonna pop over because I have a second little group of pictures here. And I'm gonna go full screen on them for ya. So this looks like a couple pictures of some of the Panthers. All right, so Carlton, I'm gonna jump this one back to the first image. And if you wanna tell us a little bit about them as I go through this time. So we're okay, up good. here. So that's a white-tailed deer. It's a species that you have, we have throughout North America, throughout the United States and Canada um, on a camera trap. Camera traps that you get really close to the wildlife. This is a young Florida black bear and that's in the pine forest with the palmettos in the background. I have to look close. This is a bobcat walking through the forest. Another one of a bobcat, which is not a big cat, but a small cat. It's uh, related to the Florida panther, but it, it's, a, it's about twice the size of a house cat that lives and travels throughout the woods. I believe you have bobcats in most of your states as well as Canada as well. And then I'm going to switch over to the, the panther now. This photograph is one that I really worked hard to try to create because it tells a story. What you see in the background is an interstate highway. It's Interstate 75. It's two lanes of traffic in both directions. And when we build highways and roads, we end up creating barriers to wildlife. Every year, 30 Florida panthers get killed by vehicle collisions. And so to help protect panthers and help to protect people who could potentially get hurt by accidentally hitting a panther, there's an opportunity to build the road up and have an underpass underneath so the wildlife can move back and forth from one side to the next. And that's what this is an example of. Here's another photograph of a panther that's had to have been taken out of the wild. He looks kind of sad here. You can imagine that he could be. Um, this is a panther that had gotten in trouble for um, being too close to human development and He's now it is living in a zoo. Here's another panther. This is a male. If, if you remember the panther that was shown in the video, it looked a lot smaller. And a male panther gets to be 150 pounds. It's really quite a big cat. Um, whereas a female panther in Florida only gets to be about 70 to 80 pounds. So think about the size of a big Labrador retriever. Or, or gold shepherd, whereas that that panther that male panther is almost twice as big. All right, so I'm going to stop the screen share and come back now. So, Carlton, what is the the state of the the panther now? Would you are their numbers rebounding? Are they staying steady, or are we still losing more? I'd say the Florida panther right now is at a real turning point. The, the numbers were extremely low in the 1970s and 80s, as few as 30 panthers in total existence. And what happens when you have such a small number of animals in an isolated population is you have inbreeding and you have genetic problems that are associated with that. So biologists in the 90s brought in a few female Texas cougars, which are cousins to the Florida panther. And, and had some of those female panthers breed with the Florida panther. That helped fix the genetic problems and recover the health of the existing population. And since then, the population has grown. And we now have as many as 200 Florida panthers roaming throughout the state of Florida, primarily at the southern tip. The big issue for panthers now is, is there going to be enough land for them to recover back and to no longer be endangered. And that's why we're focusing on this story. The 200 panthers that live in Florida are isolated to a breeding population that is at the southern tip, close to Miami and close to Naples. Well, there's not enough habitat or territory here to support a healthy number of panthers. In order for the numbers to recover, the panther has to be able to move back north into its historic range because there used to be panthers 
all throughout Florida and throughout the eastern United States, all the way up the Appalachian Mountains, all the way over to the Mississippi River. But right now, the Florida panther is the last puma in the east. But if we can protect enough land, like the, those cattle ranches that you saw in the video, where the, where the cattle ranches protect great panther habitat, and we can help create incentives so that we don't put houses and golf courses across every acre in Florida, we can still save that corridor so the panther can reach sustainable numbers. All right. Well, Carlton, you're doing some great work and the images that you're capturing are amazing. I highly suggest that um, if you guys want to see a little bit more about the landscape where Carlton works, as well as some of his 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 journeys, to go to uh, his his website, Carlton Ward Photography. It'll come up under Google. And I spent a little bit of time this morning looking through the pictures, and there's just some incredible pictures of the Florida landscape. But you can also check out some of his photographs from Africa. But now, Carlton, I think we should meet some classrooms and get some questions. Good deal. And on that topic of following my work. Um, if you guys are on Instagram, you can follow Carlton Ward. And that's where I put lots of pictures from my work in the field, more, more up to the minute photographs. Perfect. So Carlton Ward on Instagram. All right. Well, let's go to Alaska first. We have uh, some students joining us uh, with Mrs. Carton in Anchorage, Alaska. And we almost lost them. There's a fire alarm right before we got started. They had to go out and come back in. So we're glad we have you guys back. How are we doing, everybody? I'm just gathering some. Hey, guys. Great to see you. Um, I, bet a, I bet it's a lot colder up there than it is down here. No, there, 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 there's a, oh, that's a really good point. Yeah, go ahead and ask that question. Um, what if the animal knows that uh, he's he being watched? Like, if they know that they're being photographed, would they try to not, or that something happens there, would they maybe not come back by that spot again? That's a very good question. And it's important that we do not have any negative influence on the wildlife. So in addition to my camera, I have a, a video camera that watches the situation. And I've noticed that with the Florida panther, and, I, and, I've, and I've also heard with other pumas around North America, that they're not very much bothered by white light. And so the panthers typically come through and don't even look up at the camera or look at the flashes and just keep walking at the same speed they were walking before. That's not the case for all animals. I've noticed a few times when a coyote came to my camera, it took one picture and then the thing was running in the other direction. Whereas the panther just keeps walking and does not seem to be bothered by the flash. All right. Great question. Thank you for that one. We'll come back to your classroom, but I want to introduce our next classroom. Mrs. Young's group is joining us in Anaheim, California, a group of grade six students. Let me turn your microphone on. How are we doing in Anaheim? Good. Hello, California. I know you guys have to leave, but you can do right now. Hi, my name is Eddie. I recently moved to California from Florida because of Hurricane Irma. We have read that one of the problems that the panthers face is habitat loss. What steps are being taken from, to repopulate the native habitat of the panthers? And did the hurricane cause the habitat more damage? Very good questions. You sound, you sound like you were a great Floridian, and I'm sorry that we've lost you. Um, Hurricane Irma did a lot of damage to Florida, some damage to the natural landscape, but most of the damage was done to the human development. The, the Florida Panthers, one, one of the biologists had a GPS collar on a Florida Panther, and they adjusted the, the sampling of the collar to sample every five minutes. And what the Panther did when the hurricane hit is it just went into the woods and it found the covered spot and it stayed put and it sat in one place and when the hurricane was over it went about its business um it does bring up a good question it brings up a good point about development though because as we continue to develop more and more of the state the panthers have fewer options we as people when a hurricane comes we can evacuate but the panther doesn't have that opportunity but we need to give them 
the ability to move freely just like we can. And to do that, we need more of those wildlife corridors. The, one of the best ways to save panther habitat is to help save land from development by finding ranchers and other landowners who are interested in keeping their land natural for wildlife and helping get behind programs that can pay them for their development rights so that they do not develop that land. Florida, as you know, has a lot of people and about 1,000 people every single day move to Florida. That puts a lot of pressure on the natural resources. And if we continue to build houses the way we have been, it's called suburban sprawl and our human cities will grow and grow and grow to the point where there's not much space left for wildlife. But there's a way we can have the balance and that's by building higher density human communities where we build up instead of out and that way we have room for people and for wildlife all right uh great question and um uh, sorry to hear that you had to move because of the hurricane um i know that you guys do have to leave very soon uh, in anaheim so if you guys do have one more question i'll squeeze in before we meet uh our next classroom Hi, my name is Anna, and I know that in California there are wildlife crossings near many of the busy highways. What steps has Florida taken to make sure that panthers can travel safely in high traffic areas? That's a great question and a good comparison. The short answer is Florida has not quite done enough. We do have some places like Interstate 75 where I, we shared the photograph of the panther going underneath the road. But we have a lot more roads that don't have those kind of underpasses. So it's something that I'm a strong advocate for. But before we can provide the safe passage under the road, we also have to save the land on either side of the road. Because if that's going to become a shopping mall or a golf course or a development, then we lose the value of even having that crossing to begin with. So there's kind of two pieces to it. You have to save the green space for the wildlife corridor, and then you can come in and you can install the wildlife crossings where the highways meet that land. All right, thank you very much for your questions, grade sixes uh, in Anaheim. We're gonna jump to Montana now. We have uh, students joining us in Kalispell, Montana uh, with Mrs. Lynch. Let me turn your microphone on. How you doing guys? Good. Good. I see a nice Christmas tree in the background, ready for the holidays. Kayla, come here. She's wondering how Hi. you get. The, she she's wondering how you get the technology, all of your cameras and things, where you got those, or if you created them. That's a great question. Your name's Haley. Tylee. Kylie, thank you for your question. So my my camera is your combination of cameras that you can buy at the store, like a Nikon camera with a Nikon flash, with a lot of things that I had to make myself. The waterproof enclosure, the box you saw for the camera, the wiring that connects the camera to the flash, it all has to work in a place where it rains a whole lot. And we have things like hurricanes come through. And so it's been a lot of engineering on my side to help make it so I can put those cameras and have them stay safe out here in the elements. All right, let's jump back to our group in Anchorage, Alaska and see if they have one more question. Go ahead and tell him your name. Mark. Hi. And what's, what's your, your question? Are the other animals in Florida having a hard time? Like you showed the pictures of like the, the bobcats and the lynx and the bear with all of the development. How are those ones doing comparatively? All wildlife in Florida uh, needs a place to live. And so the deer, the bobcat, and the bears face similar challenges. I'm focusing on the Florida panther because of all those animals, it uses the most land. 
one male Florida panther has a home range of 200 square miles. So that's 20 miles by 10 miles. That's a big piece of land that you need to support one panther. That's called an umbrella species because if you protect the land you need to protect a Florida panther, you end up having habitat for many different other species that don't need as much land. In the home range of a Florida panther, you might have 10 Florida black bears and 500 white-tailed deer and maybe 50 or 100 bobcats. So it, it all is about protecting land in the ecosystem for all the different species. It just happens that the panther is that charismatic megafauna that helps show what's needed for everything else. All right. And then let's go back to Montana for a final question. Do you guys have another question? Yes, we have one more. Hello. Hi. When they brought the calf Texas, the Texas I. Uh, Cougars. Cougars, uh, did they make a new breed or, um, is it the same breed or is it a new breed? Is it the same breed or a new breed? That's a very good, question. very good question. So the genetics tell us that all the different pumas throughout the Americas are really the same species. So whether it's a mountain lion in California or Canada, a cougar in Texas, a panther in Florida. Two or 300 years ago, it was all one interconnected population. What makes the Florida panther unique and endangered is because it's isolated in a small population. So what I believe is that bringing in those Texas cougars just made the Florida panther a healthier Florida panther. All right. Well, Carlton, I have to thank you uh, for today. I know it's been uh, a busy day for you. There's a film crew there in the morning, then you had to trek out uh, to the camera trap for us. So I really appreciate that. Um, with the camera trap you have set up right now, uh, how long do you usually leave them in the field before you go back to check the pictures? This particular camera trap is my favorite spot, and that's where I wanted to show it to you. And it's been here for one year but I have to check on it. It can't go more than a month before I come back because the batteries won't last. So I have to change the batteries in the camera and in the flashes and change out the memory card. But it's really good for someone to look at one of these cameras every two weeks because what happens is that the grass can grow, a tree limb or a tree branch can fall down, the swamp water can rise. These systems are changing so frequently that if you don't watch out, your camera will drown or a tree will fall on it or they'll have some electrical issue like a bear pulls on a wire and breaks it. I've had all these things happen. So it's, it's a constant adventure and challenge to try to keep this technology up and running. I'll show you guys one last thing that I forgot to mention. And if you look over here on the other side of my camera trap, I have a solar panel and that solar panel provides power that helps a lot of the electronics last longer when I'm not able to be here. All right. Well, Carlton, I just want to ask you one more thing about the camera traps. Uh, yes, we sir. talked to Steve Winter a couple of days ago and oh, good. his camera trap that he showed us, one of them that he talked about was in kind of a, a city park uh yeah. in los angeles so there were pictures where hikers would stop and pose in front of it do you ever find funny pictures or is yours pretty isolated this particular camera is at a national wildlife refuge where it's very isolated from people but i do have a camera um in another property where i have gotten some funny pictures of hunters going through and doing selfies <laughs> all right well carlton First of all, thank you for hanging out with us. Second, thank you for the work that you're doing because you know one thing that's really come to the forefront over the last couple of weeks talking to so many big cats uh, grantees is um, big cats are in trouble, but 
It's so good to see there's so many people working hard to protect them all over the world, not just in Africa, but the big cats in North America too. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. And, and thank you, students and teachers. It's a real pleasure to share this part of Florida with you. So next time someone asks, you can tell them Florida has more than Disney World and the beaches. We have this amazing wildlife too. All right. So I'm going to turn the microphones on, let the cameras or the cameras, the classroom say goodbye and thank you. And then we'll let you dry off and uh, head back to, to wherever your day is going to take you next. So let's uh, turn the microphones on. Boys and girls, thanks. Goodbye. Thank you to Carlton. Bye. Thank See you. you guys. Have, have a great weekend and happy holidays. All right. Once again, thank you, Carlton, for wrapping up Big Cat Week. And thanks for taking us out to your camera trap. It looks like an absolutely beautiful spot. Thank you, Joe. Happy holidays. You as well. Thanks, everybody.